Uh, really proud of the guys, man. First of two this week. Man, got to do it again on uh, Wednesday. We'll start with Isaac. Hey, coach! Congratulations on the victory. Um, you. You're you're in this unique unique situation of playing the same team back to back on the home floor. Um, after such a big win tonight, how do you kind of approach Wednesday night to to kind of prevent complacency? Just got to push reset. Uh, in the second half, we gave them some opportunities to to do some things to to show that they could be successful. On you know, obviously, when you're up a lot of points, guys get very complacent. And we showed some weaknesses in the second half because we just weren't playing with the same intensity because we thought the game was over. So to answer your question, we got to go back and reset and then get back to the energy that we had in the first half. Jason? Hey, Penny, a lot of uh, impressive things about tonight. What was the most impressive thing in your mind? Well, you know, we shared the ball. We had seven turnovers at halftime. I thought we were going to be able to complete it, but <laughs> in the second half, we just didn't do it. But honestly, the way we shot the ball from three-point range was very impressive tonight. I'm, I'm really impressed with how we're shooting the ball from behind the line now. Uh, we still have to do better on our free throws, but, yeah, the, the, what impressed me the most was scoring 96 points and then shooting really well from behind the, the three-point line. Speaking of that, Alex, um, you know, he's two and a half years in, and he'd never had more than two three-pointers in a game. Tonight he had four. Uh, I, I know that, you know, he has said a, a number of times that people – sort of encourage him to shoot more. Um, do you think that that's that, that after seeing what he did tonight that that he'll he'll hear he'll hear that he'll hear that even more? Well he's been hearing it all all year and last year. He does really well on the spot up three point shots. He usually passes it up and then dribbles into the defense and that's not good for us because we created that shot for him to take and he has to take those shots for us to to be successful even if he's missing him. So but in practice, he's been shooting them well, and his confidence is really high, and we're glad that, we, that he took those shots tonight. Danielle? What did you see from Boogie the last few games that prompted you to put him in the starting lineup tonight? Well, you know, I've been shifting the starting lineup, but I just wanted to get him going, and he got two fouls. He got two fouls early, but he started us off really well. He really did. He played a great game from the very beginning all the way to the end and got us, got us jump started to, to jump off to that lead. This was also the uh, second game in a row that you did uh, a complete line change in, in the first substitution, and you, you left the starting lineup in for, for quite a little while. What's the motivation behind doing that? Well, the momentum was good, and as soon as I served, the momentum went away. It's kind of tough on the second group to come in and try to repeat that because usually the first group is down, and the second group has to come in with energy and get us back into the game. But the way that the starters st started the game, it was impressive, so I wanted them to play a little longer. Clayton. Uh, Penny, over the last five games, uh, you guys are shooting 48% from three. Uh, I mean, do you attribute that to the Lions set offense, maybe just kind of getting used to things a little more? I mean, what, what do you do? Just shots falling. What do you have to say about that? Well, basically, it's, it's, not, it's not so much the Lions set because we still have that set. We put more, more, more things in during that little two-week break that we had when we missed those three games. And we put more motion into it. The, the Lions set is a motion set, but we really haven't had to go to it as much during this stretch. We've used it some, but not all the time. But this is just purely us running, us making the right decisions, us not trying to play one-on-one -on -one basketball, finding open teammates, and uh, and making shots. Um, just to follow up, do you do you feel like this is the like what we saw today in terms of that and you know the three-point shot hitting? Like this is the type of offense that you want to see from this team where you've been you know trying to, to implement at its highest level, um, you know, over the last few years? Absolutely. I still go back to we were playing this way in pre, like before the season started, and DeAndre Williams was a huge part of this flow of how we played this way. And then we went to South Dakota. He was ruled ineligible and wasn't able to play. So we had to look for other people to create things, and it just wasn't the same. And then it was more one-on-one -on -one basketball. It's just taken us this long to get guys to buy into playing team basketball, sharing the basketball, getting DeAndre to make plays, the guards to make plays for each other, and the bigs to keep running. And it's starting to look a lot like we thought it would look from the beginning of the season. Jason? Can you remember a better five-game stretch over the last, at least the last 
year and a half um, since the majority of this team has been here where you guys have shot this well from three uh, over over a span of five games? No, not even on the 10-game win streak that we had last year. We did not shoot it as well. It's starting to come together. We shoot every day. Uh, we have our Tiger 100 where the guys have to make, shoot 100 threes, and they have to chart it. We get a lot of three-pointers up and a lot of shots up during pregame. And we get a lot of shots up during shoot-around. So we're with them. We shoot more. We joke all the time. We shoot more threes than anybody in practice and pre-practice and things like that for us not to shoot well. And we knew we would hit our stride to start shooting the ball well. Danielle? More often than not this season, you guys end up with more turnovers than your opponent. And that obviously was not the case tonight, even though I know it got away from you guys a little bit towards the end of the game. But what went into just that that really hot start forcing 19 turnovers in the first half? Yeah, for us, you know, that's what we do. I mean, that's a lot of turnovers to get somebody to turn the ball over. For us, we're, we're, we were forcing it and putting them in uncomfortable situations, making them very uncomfortable the entire first half. For us, we just didn't turn it over because we were getting fast breaks and laying the ball up and making our threes. In the second half, that changed. They stopped turning the ball over as much, and we started turning over more. And uh, we ended up getting to that 21 total, which just happened seven, seven and a half time. But for us, we're going to continue to put pressure on people and, um, and make them try, try to figure it out. We'll go with two more. Terry? Hey, Coach, I know the last time you had a big lead, you were disappointed in how your team played in the second half. So how do you think, how you feel about the way your team played for the whole 40 minutes? I think this was the most complete game. We did have to take some plays off, but this was the most complete game that we've had all year. But we pressure on people. I mean, 28 turnovers is a ton of turnovers. When you put your pressure on people and make them throw the ball away, that's, that's what you want. Jason? Hey, Penny, the largest run that uh, UCF had tonight was 7-0. Um, could you just talk a little bit about the importance of that sort of thing, of limiting teams to, you know, if they're going to get a run, it's going to be short, you know, like, like uh, the importance of answering a team, you know, when, when you have the opportunity to answer. Yeah, well, we're going to hang our hat on our defense. As much as we want to score 96 points every night, we know that's not going to be possible. So we definitely have things in place where we adjust to put more pressure when teams start to go on a run. We start paying more attention to the, the most dangerous. We start shuffling ourselves to try to stop that run immediately. And that's something that we've been good at for the last month. We didn't do it so well in South Dakota, but we got better out of South Dakota in doing that. And after the Auburn game, when Powell had like 27 points, I think everything else has been down the line like we wanted. Nobody else has really came in and, and got their average and really shot us out of the gym. So when we had that two weeks off, we had a chance to implement more things in our defense that could kind of stop those runs. And that's what we do. When they, when they start going on a run, we know what to do. But conversely, along, along those same lines, you, you know, your offense is answering um, probably more frequently uh, lately than – than normal and, and that that's part of it too it's like defense is is a big part of it like you said but um i would imagine that you know not letting not going long droughts yourself on on offense uh is big in that in preventing those runs we have a very talented team we feel like we have a ton of scores so we've just been missing out on a part we've been doing very well on defense but we've been missing out on a part on offense and now that these guys are hitting on all cylinders offensively makes us very dangerous because once we turn you over, we can turn it into points pretty quickly now. And that's what we want. That's what we've always wanted. Last question real quick, Mike. Hey, Penny, sorry, I got, I got in on the very end of this, but I wanted to get your take on Jordan. And what did you see after SMU when he was able to start practicing from you? And I, I know you got him in late during a blowout, but what have you seen from him that allows you to think well, that maybe he can give you something over these last five weeks? Well, we wanted to see, well, in practice, his toughness and his playmaking ability. Tonight, being nervous, you know, not knowing if you're going to get in the game, we put him out there because we had an opportunity to today. There was no disrespect to UCF or anything. We just wanted to see what he had. And he was tired. Yeah, the, the, the energy that was in his body, it drained him because he was nervous and he was anxious and all of the above. But he made a couple good plays, and he's going to play great defense. 
right now the, the, the shot making doesn't have any legs, but he's going to, he's going to exert, exert himself 100% in every effort, every time he's on that court. And that's what we like about him. Is it something though that you've seen from him in the, in the few practices that he might be able to help this team say two weeks, three weeks, four weeks from now where he gets those legs underneath him? Absolutely. He's an athlete. He's tough. He's a really good defender. He's a good rebounder in the guard position. And once everything slows down for him a little bit and he starts making a simple play, everything's going to be much, much easier. But yeah, we've seen that from him.